Hey guys. We've been scanning for a long time here, and there are a few tips and tricks that I think could save you a lot of time and headache. I like to think about scanning like painting. So what do they tell you about painting? It's all about the prep. Spend your time there so you get a nice result. Same thing goes with scanning. So here are my tips and tricks. <laughs> First thing we need to know how to use are global markers files. So I'm just gonna make one real quick. Keep in mind that each software might be a little bit different, at least in the Shining realm. Just buttons are in different places, but I'm gonna be using the free scan. So here's how you make a global markers file, right? I've got my desktop with these markers on them. What a global markers file is gonna do is just save that outline, save that orientation. So here in scan settings, we have scan markers, switching mode. Literally all I have to do is come over That's it. Over here, we see all of our markers. Now, if we wanna use this again in the future, generate global markers and save your scan. Um, I already have it saved, but we'll save it again. Now, we'll switch over to scan point cloud and we can start scanning. So if I just grab anything here, and we can get scanning, boom. And that helps massively with tracking. Here's something else that could be useful, cutting plane tools, because I will only capture some of the scan. And because I have a global markers file, I will go to uh, down here to cutting plane. And I'll do by markers. All you need is three. I do four, because if it's a flat plane, I like to do three of them. Create plane, apply. This is gonna save a lot of computer resources because um, it's only going to be scanning everything above the table, right? So now if I go back over here and start scanning again, we're not collecting a bunch of, mar uh, of data points we're never going to use. So that's a global markers file. It's just basically a saved set of coordinates. Now we can jump into our first tip, which is going to be creating different types of surfaces. I'm about to blow your mind real quick because our scanning desk here it's not a scanning desk at all. It's just a desk. This allows you to have a portable, consistent scanning area. And anywhere that you have a flat surface, you're good to go. Throw it in the back of your car, whatever. Tip number two is my favorite because it does save the most time. It basically it automates it without it being automated. You can hop on the old internet and grab one of these guys. I think you can find them on the jungle site. Can we say Amazon? You can hop on Amazon. This is just an electric turntable that I put markers on, right? So it moves. I have a global markers file for this too that I made and saved that I can access at any time. I'll show you. Open global markers, small turntable, boom. So anything I place on there, let's go crazy. This is moving in one axis, I can move in another, and I just get hard to reach areas more quickly. If I want, I can just sit here and it can do the work. Pretty self-explanatory, right? But it actually saves a surprising amount of time. But what if you have a scanner that is only handheld? The companies don't want you to know about this next tip. Any handheld scanner can be a fixed scanner. Give me that thingy. Here I have a tripod. A boom arm, I have an arm. Boom arm, arm, what is this? Production crew, what is this? It's a light stand. Light stand? It's one of the, it looks like a microphone stand. It's a, stand. It's a microphone. It's this clamp stand. You know, these things. Microphone. You can you look it on Amazon. But it has a clamp on the end of it. Some scanners have a tripod mount at the bottom. These handheld ones don't. There's no reason they can't be used fixed. Especially if you're doing ultra, like if you're at point one millimeter ultra high detail. This is the best way to capture data. I'll show you. Oh, look at that. It's now a fixed scanner with an automated turntable. And let me show you why this is actually useful. 
the higher the resolution scan you do, the smaller the viewing window of the scanner and the longer it takes. Let me show you how well this works. Let me find a part. Yeah, this one will do. All I have to do is set it down. Now I could get a cup of coffee. If it was a higher detail part, I can spend longer on it. It can go for as long as it wants. Five minutes, 10 minutes, two minutes. This is an easy part, so it's not gonna take very long. Now that you know about the globe markers file, the turntable, the cutting plane, little extra I threw in there, the tripod comes the big brain idea. So on Amazon, these are gonna be small. They handle a lot of weight, so don't worry about it. Uh, that you can put whatever you want on there, but what if you need to scan something bigger? <laughs> Check this out. Put a bigger turntable on the turntable that also has markers. So you can scan much larger things. Scan this, get a global marker file of that. Let's find something bigger. This would cover most of the markers on the smaller turntable. I'll just do this one by hand because it'll be fast. And with all of these markers, it's going to remain very accurate and I can scan very quickly. Same concept, bigger table without having to buy another turntable. That leads us to the next and final issue, which is mounting something. So if you're not putting markers on your part, you're not gonna be able to use marker alignment. So capturing as much of the part as you can in these scans is useful. So on to our last and my favorite tip, because I use this the most, is orienting a difficult part. So let's say, okay, this piston round it likes to roll. If I stick it here, it's gonna, when the turntable moves, it's gonna move, it wants to fall over. Very simple. It's my little friend, hot glue. Now, you've probably seen people using this sticky putty. This putty is gonna get disgusting very quickly if you're in an environment with a lot of dust or anything. Hot glue works fine. If you have a part that can take a little bit of heat, but you don't need much. I'm just gonna put a little bit right here. That's not going anywhere. How do you get the hot glue off afterwards? IPA, that's stuck on there, right? IPA will take it off without damaging anything. This is isopropyl alcohol. Wow, magic. Left it behind, no damage to either material, and you just wipe it off. Those are my tips for scanning consistently, saving time, believe it or not. They all seem very simple, but I promise if you utilize them, you'll find them a lot more useful than they seem, especially the tripod and the electric turntable. I use that every time I scan pretty much, unless I'm doing something like a car. So, hey, please, if you have creative, unique, clever solutions, let us know. We'll do another video with them and we'll give you credit. So leave them down in the comments. This was the free scan I used today. I love this tool. If you have any other questions about it or any of the scanners we sell, you can send us an email, give us a call. Always check out our website. We're here to help. My name is Cole. Thank you for your time and have a wonderful day. Also buy Nano Palmer adhesive and by A sub. And uh, can you stop filming? Okay, got it.